Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Roof Guru. Thank you for watching. So this video, I'm gonna walk you through the process that I use to make some coasters for drinks. Now, this is actually the fusion of a couple of different techniques that I've talked about before on this channel, all put together to create the coasters. And I will show you the results. So let's uh, stand by. The two different coasters. <clears throat> Uh, essentially they're the same, or nearly the same thickness. I had this particular, this is Poplar, which I purchased from uh, one of the big box stores, I, either Home Depot Lowe's, don't remember which, and this is uh, maple that I had laying around that I resawed, cut in half, and ended up with two boards, roughly the same thickness. So what you'll see is these are resin inlaid uh, coasters. And so I followed the normal process that I follow for making the inlay cutting boards or the other inlay artifacts that I've made in the past. But in this case, I filled the inlay with some resin. And if you remember, probably about a year or so ago, I made a very uh, relatively large uh, wall hanging, which was a resin inlay. And that is the process that I followed here. Uh, the, the notable difference is, is it's smaller in scale, easier to deal with, um, and you can batch these out very quickly. So I'm gonna cut over to the kind of montage of me doing most of the work and with a little bit of a voice overlay, and then we'll come back and wrap up the video. So stand by. So here is the X-Car doing its magic. I used a 0 .07 depth of cut and an eighth inch bit. So I did two passes total to get to the 0.125 depth of cut here, which I found to be pretty much the perfect depth for these resin inlays. I switched here to do an outline real quick uh, that really helped me line up whenever I took it over to the table saw and to the miter saw to do the final cutting. Next, I'm pouring the resin. I'm using Total Boats high performance uh, two to one uh, fast hardening resin with a little bit of the black diamond mica powder, which turned out fantastic. Highly recommend that. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. So I did uh, three colors total, a uh, black, the blue here down the middle as you can see right here and then I did a green which I did not get on camera. This is the miter saw uh, cutting down the board and then cutting the other ends and then I am doing a quick chamfer on the outsides about a quarter inch or a sixteenth of an inch chamfer to give it a nice break on the sides. All right, well, that was a video. I hope you liked it. Uh, so I took an image, I created a vector out of it. I did not get any uh, real video of that because I've done videos about that in the past. So if you're interested in that, I will link that up above and then you can watch that video on how to turn a, a bit map or a GIF or a JPEG into a vector art to import into the CAD program. Took the image, uh, pulled it into Fusion 360, did the tool pass for it, and then put it on the X-Carve, uh, cut the pocket, filled the pocket with the resin, and then let it cure overnight, planed it smooth, sanded it, what for felt like a bazillion hours, um, and then did a couple quick coats of uh, polyurethane and lacquer. I did one in polyurethane and one in lacquer. Uh, now why did I do one of each? Well, it was a little bit of experiment. So it turns out the lacquer dries very quickly and you can do multiple coats very rapidly and then the polyurethane takes much longer to dry. Uh, so in the end, the lacquer is, if you wanna batch these out and you wanna make a whole bunch of these, the lacquer is a better way to go about it because in a process of maybe four to five to six hours, you can finish the entire project done. Uh, in terms of the uh, final finishing. For the uh, polyurethane, it actually takes uh, probably uh, an entire day and a half, maybe two solid days, and then you kinda, you're supposed to let it cure for 72 hours before use. It's okay, so here is the final product. I'm super excited by it. Uh, this particular thing was inspired by a t-shirt that I saw at a swim meet for one of my uh, minions. And so you have back, you have free, you have breast, and you have fly. So I really like these. I think that they turned out really well. I'm really excited by 
the blue here, it's got a nice little line through the middle. I did a little swirly uh, after the resin was partially cured. Uh, the green here happens to be the color of the team, and then the black lettering turned out really well. Um, you can do this in any color that you want. The logos itself are universal to any swim team. You can customize these to uh, the team color if you want. So super simple to do because the cat is already done. Uh, the only variable here is what color you make the resin in and then, uh, you know, the final finishing process. So um, batch these out very quickly. The next set of coasters I made is simply the logo of the swim team for my, uh, my minion. And that is a gorilla in this case. Uh, so what I did is I took their logo from their web page. I again turned it into a vector art and routed it out. Now this uh, routing was not as straightforward as the other one. Uh, I had to route this with an eighth inch bit and then come back and finish it with a 16 inch bit. Uh, so that made it a two step process, so it took longer. Um, and because you're routing with such a small bit, a 16th inch of a bit, um, uh, 0.0625 inches, uh, it actually took almost an entire hour to route out these four. So uh, by contrast, uh, the other ones only took about 20 minutes total. So these are uh, essentially three times more labor intensive from the machine perspective than the other ones. So I am not charging differently for them uh, because there really is only one um, resin color in this. Uh, so the, the time into it is, uh, you know, more, significantly more, but it's same, same. So I wouldn't charge more than that. So if you're interested um, in maybe purchasing some of these, I do have some of them on my website. I sold quite a few to the swim team members and the parents specifically, so they're very excited by this. Um, and like I said, you can do pretty much any logo you want, whether it's a sports logo, you know, professional, uh, don't violate any copyright rules or any trademarks, um, or your local team sports, uh, you know, Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, you name it, you can do pretty much anything you want. These are super easy. So um, let's break down a little bit. Let's break down some of the costs. This in particular, this is the Poplar from, uh, from the big box store I bought. It was a $5 for 24 inches long and six inches wide. Now these coasters are four and a half inches wide, so you only get, um, you, you get one series for $5, so $5 for the, uh, the materials for the wood, and then the resin cost. I did not compute specifically how much resin I used, but it was roughly about four ounces, uh, which works out to be about $2 or so. Uh, worth of resin. Again, very imprecise measurements. I did not do it in detail. Um, so about seven dollars or so between the uh, resin and then, uh, you know, however much lacquer or uh, polyurethane you use. So we're talking maybe eight dollars worth of, of goodness here uh, if you don't count the labor and the time. Uh, and so uh, you can charge whatever you want for these. The going price on on Etsy is between 20, 25, and 30 dollars. So I think that's a reasonable price for something like this, depending how complicated the logo is. All right, so that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. If you like the video very much, give it a thumbs up. If you did not like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway, just because this was an awesome video. But more importantly, I would like you to leave comments down below about why you might not like the video, and then we can make some adjustments for the future. All right, awesome. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, ring that bell, very important these days, and be inspired.